Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's The Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in for the good doctor. My friend Michael is under the weather. He was fighting through the program yesterday. But this crud that's going around has gotten the best of him. So filling in here from the left coast, where I've, I've of course, been on the the same station with Dr. Savage for years. He founded KSFO. I mean, he was the founding member of what's turned out to be an iconic conservative station on the left coast in San Francisco. 855-400-SAVAGE is the number. 855-400-7282. Don't forget michaelsavage.com. And by the way, I'm at michaelsavage.com right now. Why go anywhere else? All the news of the day. It begins with one of the lead stories. The fall of Mrs. Barf rhymes with Harf. Ah, yes, Marie Harf. That piece of work. State Department spokesperson. Well, they say she's being uh, she's being run out of the State Department. No, she's getting a raise. Now she's going to be John Kerry's director of communications. Great. Great. Yeah, the, the way these people are running the operation of Washington, D.C., it's almost like they want to get us into a war. The fall of Ms. Barf. The flub machine, and we've got some some proof of that coming up on the broadcast. The war on cops. Third white police officer shot dead this week. I don't know who would want to be a cop these days. The cops are so under the microscope. And now, of course, we have a Department of Justice that's going balls to the wall, aviation term, balls to the wall to take them out. I believe it's an attempt to federalize our police forces here in the United States. And we have some stories to go along with that as well. Obama's ISIS strategy sparks doubt and resentment among Pentagon officials. Well, yeah. What is the? Can anybody tell me what the strategy is with ISIS? Can anyone tell me? Don't blame Bush. Under this particular president, ISIS has grown and has become, well, did we even hear of an ISIS during the Bush years? These are the worst of the worst terrorists this world has ever seen. There have been bad guys, sure, in years gone by throughout history. I understand that. But now they've got weapons, the likes of which no one imagined. And this group has money, money. We'll talk about, can anybody clearly state the ISIS strategy? As far as I know, it's let them take as much real estate in the Middle East and North Africa as possible. Give them back their beloved caliphate. Sometimes it makes a rational person just has to step back sometimes and ask the question, what team is this guy on? And you know who I'm talking about, Barack Hussein Obama. Also this morning, or I should say this afternoon here on the Savage Nation, I will make a few this morning gaffes because uh, I have a morning show in San Francisco, so don't hold that against me, just move past it. King Obama blocked by the Fed. This broke yesterday, as you know, from listening to the Savage Nation. Obama smacked upside the head. This was a big deal. When you get this federal appeals court refusing to lift lift that injunction against Obama's deportation amnesty. You know, I think we could safely call this president the illegal president. Well, we have illegal aliens, although now we're supposed to call them what? I heard this on Savage's show yesterday. The ACLU says we're supposed to call the illegal aliens um, international commuters. This is an ill. That's true, by the way. We'll get to that story as well, in case you didn't hear it yesterday from Michael Savage himself. But the bottom line is, we have an illegal president in that, in that this is a man who looks at the Constitution and devises ways to hack it, to get around it. He's a constitutional hacker. Really. He tries to get around it, tries to find ways to get by it. Constitution, schmonstitution. He doesn't care about the rule of law in this country. Congress, schmongers, I don't need them. I'll go it alone. That's exactly what he did with the Deferred Action for Parental Accountability, or DAPA. He went it alone. And you had this Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals calling him on it. Folks, we live in a nation governed by a system of checks and balances. It worked. The federal court stopped him. 25 states joined Texas in suing to halt this amnesty. Why? 
because it's illegal. What he did was illegal. That's why we can safely call him on matters like this the illegal president. Changes Obamacare, stroke of the pen, no big deal. Okay, back to michaelsavage.com. Oh, countdown to Mecca Band. Go figure, you're kidding me. I don't know how many of you, I know many of you have read the book Countdown to Mecca. It's Michael's latest novel, part of the trilogy. And uh, like all of Savage's books, uh, they, they are banned from one outlet or another. In this particular case, I think we could safely agree, it's the New York Times who refused to review the book. Uh, Michael Savage, the plot to every, and by the way, you'll hear it time and time again from those who haven't read the book and have no intention of reading the book and just want to smear Savage. They'll say, well, it's the plot to blow up Mecca. Well, yeah, but when you read the book, you realize the plot is stopped. It's not as if Michael is hoping to blow up Mecca. It's a plot that stops the blow, but I'm not going to tell you anymore because you got to read the book for yourself. It's available in stores now. So we're at michaelsavage.com. You know, there was another thing that happened today. And uh, this is a woman who, you have to remember, Carly Fiorina, who's running for president. Uh, There was a time in the 90s where she was the female businesswoman of the year for several years in a row, I believe. Uh, She is, let me tell you something, she's hardcore. She's a hardcore decision maker. She's a fighter. And when she was in the Silicon Valley, I think she was the first uh, female CEO of a uh, top 50 Fortune 500 company. Uh, there were a lot of people who didn't want to see her succeed. Seriously, especially in the 90s. It was a man's world in the Silicon Valley. And she made a lot of tough decisions. But I love this because she will tell you exactly what she's thinking. As opposed to, for example, Hillary Clinton who doesn't like reporters all that much, does she? But she was on Andrea Mitchell's show on MSNBC, which means nobody saw it. But we've got the audio, and we'll play it in just a bit for you here on The Savage Show. But uh, she's talking about Hillary Clinton. (laughs) Oh, She just, she tears into it. No teleprompter, no notes, no nothing. She says, yeah, well, there's some wonderful things that Hillary did as Secretary of State. Um, But she said, it's also true as Secretary of State, she called Bashar al-Assad... Syria, a positive reformer. She did. It's also true in 2011 when she was Secretary of State. She said that Iraq was a free, stable, sovereign nation. And now we have a nation falling apart. ISIS growing. It's true that she said she could reset our Russian relationship. (laughs) And so how's that going for us? That's Hillary Clinton. She has nothing to run on. She's got nothing to run on by her name and the power that the Clintons embody so well. Carly Fiorina, we'll talk more about her on the program as well. How about this? The mother of the Navy, of a Navy SEAL killed in Ramadi. This gets back to the ISIS strategy. What is it? I'd really like to know. At 855-400-SAVAGE, what is Obama's ISIS strategy? I look at what ISIS is doing all around the world. It frightens me. It frightens me. I look at, the, I look at how awful these people are and have no respect to life whatsoever. And, and you know, if... How? What should the strategy be? Carly Fiorina actually addresses that. She does, and I'll get into this in just a bit. She addresses the strategy. She, she was asked, if you were president, what would you do? What would you do? She talks about having a Camp David conference with our Arab, Arab allies. And uh, who are our allies? The Kurds. They've asked for our help. We haven't given any. The Jordanians. They've asked for our help. We haven't given them any. We uh, have, um, guess what? You have King Abdullah of Jordan asking our country for help. We give him nothing. So what does he do? He's going to China. The Egyptian president says there's a cancer in the heart of Islam. He wants Washington to share intelligence with him. They won't do it. So again, you just ask the question, whose team is Obama on? But enough of Obama. Here's the mother of a Navy SEAL. I've actually met this woman before, Gold Star Mom Debbie Lee. So her son was killed in Ramadi, which, of course, has been taken over by ISIS. Listen to what she says here in cut three, please. It's just sickening. It's gut-wrenching to see what's happened over there. 
And I just feel like our administration isn't doing anything to be successful. It's almost as if they want to lose over there. And it's just the attitude is so insensitive and so flippant. I feel like they don't have strategies. Um, as I said a minute ago, it feels like they don't want to be successful over there. They do want to lose that territory. Listen, Debbie Lee, uh, my heart goes out to her. She lost her son, a Navy SEAL. I believe he was the first Navy SEAL killed in the war. She's a wonderful woman. She loves America so much. What is the strategy? I really want to know. Uh, Robert is calling from Washington, D.C., WMAL. Robert, thanks for checking in on this, the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you so much, sir. Um, I just wanted to say our president, when you really look at everything that he's uh, accomplished, should I say, since he's taken office, if you look at what he's really done, um, he's supposed to defend our country first. That's supposed to be his primary job. And everything he's done, when you look at it for what it is, is to unravel everything to protect the, the country, the citizenry, and everything that he's doing now to the Department of Justice is to, is to uh, create civil unrest and uh, just turn everything upside down. That's why it, the man has no policy in the Middle East. He has no, he doesn't have people that can advise him properly that are the politicians, not the military, but the politicians. But it, it's really a travesty. This, this man is an anarchist. That's what he truly is. Well, I mean, look, Robert, thanks for your call. You meet, when you meet true diehard leftists, especially the activists and agitators that are on streets throughout America stirring up trouble, like the people in Boston who were allowed the space to destroy, they are anarchists. They are anarchists. They are. And anarchy is now taught on our college campuses. The left doesn't mind anarchy whatsoever. As long as it's a controlled type of anarchy, the likes of which we're seeing on our streets, and the likes that are keep placing cops in jeopardy. I mean, like I was saying at the very beginning of this program, who would want to be a cop nowadays? you got the Department of Justice breathing down your throat, about down your neck. Uh, you've got the bad guys knowing that you're going to think twice, perhaps, about taking action. Where was the story over the weekend? We had a cop who made an arrest somewhere because a guy was open container on the sidewalk. You're not allowed to do that. Hey, buddy, you, don't, you can't be drinking on the sidewalk. Cop goes up to him and says, listen, you gotta get rid of the you got to get rid of the booze on the sidewalk. The guy starts hassling the cop. Okay, I guess I guess you can get away with that now. Kind of like a dare me, I da like I dare you. Guy starts hassling the cop. Cop tries to, threatens to arrest the guy. The guy starts running. Cop grabs the guy, gets him to the ground, puts the cuff on him, and the surrounding crowd beats the crap out of the cop. This is the day and age in which we live, fostered by this administration. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, the Savage Nation, 855 400 7282. Don't forget michaelsavage.com and the countdown to Mecca in stores now. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800 B U Y C O I N. It's the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE, michaelsavage.com. And don't forget the book, Countdown to Mecca, in stores now. We'll talk more about that later in this program. So Carly Fiorina, as you know, she's running for president. I think it's a good thing because Hillary won't be able to claim sexism as long as there's a woman running on the Republican side of the aisle. I've known about Carly Fiorina for a long time here in the Silicon Valley. There are a lot of people who have worked for, with her in a number of capacities who say she's great. People that were laid off when she was a part of HP Hater. So there you go. But I can tell you something. She'll tell you what she's thinking each and every time. Here she is today on MSNBC. Sadly, no one was listening, but now they are. Uh, she's talking about Hillary's record. This is clip 13, guys. Clip 13. 
that as Secretary of State, she took women's rights and human rights off the table for discussion with China. It's also true as Secretary of State that she called Bashar al-Assad a positive reformer. It's also true that in 2011, when she was Secretary of State, she said that Iraq was a free, stable, sovereign nation, and now we have a nation falling apart, Iranian influence growing, ISIS growing. It's true that she said that she could reset our Russia, our relationship with Russia, and Vladimir Putin is on the march. So I think all of those things I just named go fundamentally to what is her track record. Yes, that's her track record. All right. Mark's in San Francisco calling from KSFO. Mark, go ahead. You're on the air on this, The Savage Nation. Yeah, you know, if we could fly over to Syria, we would see Assad protecting the Christians, Brian. He's a nice Muslim. He did not use chemical weapons on his own people, okay? There's some Muslims that are nice, and he's one of them. And he's been framed. He didn't hurt well, I, my, Mark, here's, I will tell you, in defense of what you're saying and what Carly Fiorina just said a moment ago, you can say this about Assad. I don't, I don't know that he's a nice guy. I believe he's a, he's a, he's a strong-handed uh, man. Some would say a despot. Some might even say a dictator. But like we have seen throughout history in that part of the world, you need very strong hands to control the crazy Muslims. That's what's been necessary throughout time to keep the crazy Muslims in check. You need a strong hand. And I think that's what Assad has been able to do. And if you get rid of Assad, guess what? You get ISIS. So thanks for your call on this, the Savage Nation. Uh, Fred, WMAL, please quickly go right ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Oh, yeah. How's it going, man? Great. Look, uh, I just wanted to say that I, I hear so much negativity about our president. And, yes. And it's, it really bothers me. I mean, yes. this is the president of the United States. Uh, right. He won two elections. And yes. you guys haven't learned yet. You talk crap about him, he wins. So you know what? Here's the deal. You know why we talk crap about him? Because he's a crappy president. We have a crappy president in the White House. We have a man occupying the White House who wants to fundamentally transform the United States of America. Fred, I don't know if you're married or not, but could you imagine if you went to your wife and said, I love you, honey, but I want to fundamentally transform you. That's what this man's doing to America, and it's not of the American spirit. So thanks for calling on this, the Savage Nation. You know, I can't help it if there are so many idiots in this country that voted for this guy twice. But nonetheless, we move on to kinder topics. MichaelSavage.com, Countdown to Mecca, Michael's book in the stores. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman here in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. For those of us who were listening to the broadcast yesterday, and I was, I was just talking to the producer of this program, uh, the producers. I've been listening to Savage since he was a local host in San Francisco. This guy's has been probably 20 years. And all of us, and I wasn't in the radio biz then, I was in television then. But all of us in the media world in San Francisco, the first time you heard Michael, it was, okay, this guy's different. And it starts, obviously, with his voice, which is, you know, it's it's... There's something so unique about it, especially if you're in San Francisco and you're not around someone with the, the New York accent. But it was beyond that. It was his use of the language and, and uh, very, very colored, full descriptions of what was going on. But he was saying things that no one had ever said before. And early on, he got onto the borders, language, culture theme. And everyone in San Francisco media realized this guy is definitely going somewhere quickly. And, you know, now you know the rest of the story. But Savage was struggling yesterday on the air, and we conversed after the program, and and I was available for today. So he's resting comfortably today as he needs to be, because this crud that's going around, as many of you know, is some pretty serious stuff. Uh, some of the headlines in the news, you can just go to michaelsavage.com, and you'll see some of the headlines. But one of the headlines, the war on the cops, third white police officer shot dead this week. I asked the question early in the broadcast, who'd want to be a cop these days? I mean, I look at how the Department of Justice is going in and meddling in local police affairs. It's as if they want a nationalized police force. Cops are going to be more restricted in how they do business. Drew is calling from WMAL in D.C. Drew, you're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go right ahead, please. 
Hey, how you doing? Okay. Well, here's my point when it comes to police and and those that want to flex their muscle and walk up to somebody that might be breaking a law. The police officer needs to have, uh, you know, okay, there's a guy drinking a beer. All right, why does he have to go over and flex his muscle and tell the guy, put the beer away, it's against the law? Because it's against the law. What are you supposed to do, just let lawlessness go unchecked? No, but see, there's, there's the other problem. It's lawlessness, okay. If somebody's an aggressor, if somebody's going after somebody, trying to, you know, giving kids underage beer or doing something against somebody else, whether it be stealing or harming, assault battery or killing or whatever, that's where the police officer is, is justified in doing something immediately. But if somebody is over trying to drink a beer on the side, not doing anything to anyone else, then... What's just the, just turn a blind. Are you saying he's just supposed to turn a blind eye to this? The shopkeepers would be upset with this. If I if I owned a business on that particular street and the cop just walked right by somebody drinking in front of my establishment and I'm selling clothing or I'm selling candy or whatever, I'd be upset with the police officer. Don't you see? There's a man here breaking the law. Talk to him and tell him to get rid of the beer and move along. Right, and that's for the shopkeeper, the shop owner, to come out and... and make- no, that's why we have police. You don't understand. So, Drew, in this particular case, we had a situation where the cop goes up to a guy, talks to him about the open container. The guy is the one who resists arrest. The, I, I don't know that the cop was actually going to arrest him. It may have been just a reflection. A ref, uh, it could have been something that could have been carried out with a, a simple uh, you know, handing of a ticket. I'm not sure how that went over there. But the guy resisted arrest and tried to flee. That's when he was apprehended by the cop. The cuffs were put on, and then he had the crap beat out of him, the cop did, by the crowd that surrounded him. Why did the cop- so you're saying it's the cop's fault? Why did the cop need to chase and pursue him? He left the scene, let him go, because it's, it's, it, you don't have to. Well, Drew, what you're saying is the way that I'm sure the Obama administration is now counseling the police on how to behave in the future. Thanks for your call. Here's the deal. You go through the whole list, the I can't breathe guy in New York City, and listening to that audio tape was horrible. I just, it was, it was, it was horrible. The uh, hands up, don't shoot, which we now know, never, now know never happened. The situation in Baltimore was somehow the guy's spine is broken. I don't know what happened there. But I can tell you one thing in each of those three cases. Now, whether the police behaved improperly or not, that's one story. But let's talk about how we got there. In each one of those situations, the person who ended up dying resisted arrest. That's how it started. Even the big guy on the sidewalk selling cigarettes in New York City. He was resisting arrest. You could see the, the police tape. Your advice, don't resist arrest. It's real simple. If you ever get pulled over by the police for a a speeding violation, a traffic violation, here's what you do. You put your hands on top of the steering wheel and open them up and keep them there. That's what you do. Okay? It's going to go a lot easier with that police officer when he knows you are not a threat, uh, period, and you are going to be cooperating. Uh, That's it. That's all you need to know there. Other stories in the news. This is this is one that troubles me so much. Uh, some of the great historical artifacts of all time. I'm looking what ISIS is now planning on doing in Palmyra, in Syria. They want to level it. The amount of work that has been done in recent decades to restore these ruins. And there is historical evidence that King Solomon from the Bible, okay, actually was involved in the fortification of that once great city. These are treasures, artifacts, world history, beautiful stuff. ISIS wants to go in there and just level them all. So Bill's calling out of Reno, KKOH. Bill, thanks for checking into the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are. Uh, Talk to us about this, Bill. Yeah, listen, uh, I'm an Iraqi vet, and it makes me sick to my stomach now to know that they want to not only, you know, drop Paul Myra, but they're selling artifacts right now. It's not later. They're doing it now, and wealthy Americans and Europeans are buying them. And then I have other people telling me Muslims are okay. But let me tell you, they may be okay, but I know 97% of the children, murderers, and people that are hacking the human 
race to death over there. Ninety-seven percent are Muslim. I'm just sick of it. We need to surround the mosques. We need to register everyone. And I don't care what the government says. Unfortunately, until this president is gone, that's not going to happen. But I pray to God our next president lets us start registering Muslims in this country. It needs to be done. And that's my opinion. Thank you for letting me be on. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, Bill. And as a guy who fought over there, obviously you have some strong feelings. I'm not, so, I'm not so sure about the registering of Muslims, but I can tell you this. Uh, we need to stop immigration from these Muslim countries right now. I think we've got enough. Uh, all the refugees coming over from these various countries, we have plenty. Thank you very much. We're not allowing Christian refugees to come to this country, and there are, some could argue, millions of them. Uh, I didn't know that Americans were buying these priceless artifacts, but at the one, on the one hand, I can understand why they might, because these are priceless artifacts. And one would hope that the artifacts could remain long after ISIS is but a distant memory. All right. We had a moment ago, we were talking with Drew from uh, the D.C. area, and he was saying, you know, it's the cops. The cops are always the aggressors here. Why do they... Why would they have to bother a guy who's just drinking an open container on the sidewalk, even though there's a law against it? So Mike is calling from WFTL. Mike, thanks for joining us on this, the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead, please. I'm a retired police officer. What I want to know is who decides which laws the police enforce and which they don't. Today they don't enforce the drinking law. Tomorrow they don't enforce the robbery law. The next day they don't enforce the murder law. They you either enforce all the laws or you don't enforce any of them. You can't I'm in agreement with you. I just can't imagine that you would just turn a blind eye to certain infractions just because they might seem minor. I, and again, you're retired law enforcement. You know this better than anybody. They have what's called police discretion. What the officer probably did is tell the fellow, hey, you can't drink that beer. Pour it out and you know, we'll let everything go. Probably, I'll bet that was the I don't know all the details here, but I wouldn't be surpri- surprised if that was the first course of action, Mike. He gave him a choice. That way you're not violating the law. I'm not letting a, a crime occur. He turned it down, I'm sure, and he's got into the scuffle and he took off and all that. You can't enforce some laws and not enforce others. Who decides? Does the city council decide? And does the mayor decide? This law, we're not going to enforce this when we are. It sets a terrible precedence for this country. Well, we're not going to enforce these laws. And then we'll add this law tomorrow, and we're not going to enforce that law to the next day. You can't do it. If you do all the laws or nothing, if you don't like the laws, have the government change them. I like it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for checking in. Did you hear about the... <laughs> this is the man from Kenya. We'll get back to your calls in just a moment. Phone number on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Don't forget michaelsavage.com. Man from Kenya. So Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, is going to his homeland of Kenya. (laughs) That's too easy. Come on. Come on now. That's just too easy. He's going to his he's going to Kenya for a visit in July. (laughs) So there's a lawyer there. He became uh, in he he he. He fell in love with Malia Obama in 2008. That's six years ago when she was 10. Now, the name is Felix Kiprano. Felix Kiprano, he's a lawyer in Kenya from Nairobi. Since then, he's dreamed of marrying Malia. Malia is the 16-year-old, the oldest of Obama's daughters. He said, quote, I got interested in her in 2008. As a matter of fact, I haven't dated anyone since, and I promised to be faithful to her. He's drafting a letter to Obama, quote, asking him to please have Malia accompany him for the trip. He says he would like to marry her, and in order to marry her, he wants to buy her. He wants to buy her for 70 sheep, 50 cows, and 30 goats. If Barack Hussein Obama will go for this, he promises they will lead a simple life. He said, I will teach Malia how to milk a cow, cook ugali, and prepare mersic, which is a traditional sour milk. (laughs) So this guy's been in love with her since she was 10. 
is I don't is this the common tradition in Kenya? Is this guy a Muslim? Because I know that uh, you know the Orthodox traditional Muslims allow for the marrying of girls at a young age in the spirit of Muhammad. What's the deal here? I want to know. 70 sheep, 50 cows, and 30 goats. <laughs> I've looked at all of the callers. I, I love this on the Savage Nation. If uh, Let me see here. Let's go back to this, this tags along with the comments we made at the very open of the show. And we'll play more of this for you. Carly Fiorina running for president. Carly Fiorina. And caller Sandhole will get to you eventually. Carly Fiorina running for president. Carly Fiorina was on MSNBC today and said some really, really sharp things regarding Hillary Clinton. Mike is calling from the Silicon Valley, where, of course, Carly worked at HP for a long time. So you say she's a dynamite candidate, Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. You're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in quickly. Brian, Brian, that guy from Africa, I think he's a uh, San Francisco liberal. Anyway, in the uh, last few weeks, I had the opportunity to meet with Carly on two occasions in uh, D.C. and in Colorado Springs at uh, some conferences. Brian, as you know better than most, this woman is dynamite. She knows more about corporate conditions, the economy, than just about every Republican candidate going. And we've got some great ones going. She really deserves the attention and support of our listeners uh, on this day at KSFO because this woman has got a lot to say, and we should listen to her. Well, and uh, Mike, the- Mike, listen, I appreciate your call, but for the sake of time, I will say this. She does have a lot to say. I don't know if she would be the best presidential choice at this particular time. It's way too early to tell. We need to get through the process. But I, I like her. She's tough. She says what's going on, and I like her in the race because— at the end of the day, then Hillary can't claim sexism and say, I, oh, woe is me, they're doing this to me because I'm a woman. Bag that nonsense. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on This the Savage Nation. We're going to talk a little bit about Mike's book, Countdown to Mecca, which is in the stores now. Highly encourage you to pick up a copy. 855-400-SAVAGE. That's the number on This the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Michael Savage, of course, a bit under the weather. Fought through yesterday's program, but certainly needed a day off today. Back tomorrow. 855-400-SAVAGE. The phone number, michaelsavage.com, of course, the website. And one of the other stories that we want to get to in the next hour is uh, in Cleveland. They've reached a deal with the Department of Justice. So Cleveland police are now going to be, um, well, their police department's going to be reformed by the Department of Justice. This is what the Department of Justice wants to do all over the United States. And I'm telling you something, like Rick and KVR, KVOR Colorado. Rick, quickly, please, you got about 15 seconds. I understand you're a retired cop, and my guess is with everything going on, you're probably glad you're retired. Man, you know what? I thank God that I, I retired five years ago, May 1st. Uh, I didn't want to retire. I got injured. I've had eight surgeries and pain every day. But you know what? I would rather take the pain every day than have to deal with what these guys are dealing with now. It is insane. It's impossible for the cops to do their job, and it's only going to get worth, worse, especially when you have Loretta Lynch, who's like Eric Holder in drag as our attorney general. Thanks for your call. Does that work that way, Eric Holder? Maybe Eric Holder was Loretta Lynch in drag, and he had the job first. I don't know. They're cut from the same cloth. That's my point. Uh, by the way, countdown to Mecca. Countdown to Mecca. This is the final episode of Savage's trilogy that began with the other books. It was Abuse of Power and A Time for War. Uh, countdown to Mecca is about a plot to destroy Islam's holy city. But, but, there was one man who might be able to stop the attack. And I can't give you the whole story, of course. But it's Jack Hatfield, that's Savage's hero. And he's that freelance TV producer who lost his top-rated opinion show because of a liberal media smear. My goodness, doesn't that sound familiar? By a group that resembles Media Matters. 
But this book is doing incredibly well, just as you would suspect. So buy it in stores today. Michael Savage's Countdown to Mecca. Brian Sussman, proud to be filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's the Savage Nation, everybody. That's right. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. It's the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Michael's off. Uh, Those of you who listened to the program yesterday knew that he realized, because he made it clear he was struggling, uh, just was really hit by this bug that is going all around. And everyone thought it was best to just keep him out of action for a day so he could come back strong and finish out the week Thursday, Friday. So, Brian Sussman here. Uh, Michael and I have been on the same outlet in San Francisco, KSFO, for years. Long before I was ever even on the station, I was a listener of Michael's local show before he was syndicated. So we've got a long-standing relationship via radio. There is a guy that troubles me, and I know he troubles Michael as well, John McCain. Uh, when John McCain was running for president, I tried really hard to be a fan and and I was really only a fan because he was running against Obama, who I didn't like from the get-go. And it had nothing to do with Obama's color, for you liberals listening. It had to do with the fact that um, I had studied his political career and studied a little bit about his life, and all those things made me believe that he was not the right man for our nation. This is a guy who wanted to fundamentally transform America. Now, think about that. If I went to you, and I I mentioned this to a caller in the last hour, but let's expand upon it because I know a lot of new listeners are just checking in. If you guys listening to me who are married or guys listening to me have a girlfriend, if you went to that significant other and said, I love you, I love you, and I want to fundamentally transform your life, She'd say, what? And at that moment in time, you might get one upside the head. Maybe she would allow you to continue to say, I like you, but, you know, we just need a little, little plastic surgery in the face. You know, maybe a boob job. Let's just, let's do something about the, you know, the waistline. Could you imagine? She would crack you so hard upside the head and you would deserve it. That means you don't love her. You want to transform her into something else. So when Barack Obama said he wants to fundamentally transform America, right off the bat, whoop, 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 sirens are going off in my head, big red light, antenna on alert. So we were given McCain. Boy, that was a real strategy for victory, wasn't it? Anyway, here's McCain, CBS News. He's telling them that there is no strategy to fight ISIS, and he's absolutely correct. This is clip seven. We need to have a strategy. There is no strategy. And and anybody that says that there is, I'd like to hear what it is, because it certainly isn't apparent now. And uh, right now, we are seeing these horrible... Uh, the reports are now in Palmyra. They're executing people and leaving their bodies uh, in the streets. Meanwhile, the president of the United States is saying that the biggest enemy we have is climate change. It is absolutely ridiculous. He's, no, he's spot on on this one. Climate change. You know, my past life, I was a TV meteorologist. I know something about this. Anybody with a brain in their head does as well. Climate change. Can I tell you something? Climate change. National security issue. I'm along with McCain on this one. I'm watching these videos. You probably have to at least watch one of them. One of these chop the head off videos. Just so you understand this enemy we face, these guys are serious about what they're doing. And you look at these videos that they produce. These are, I wouldn't be surprised if the guys producing these death videos 
are graduates of the UCLA, uh, UCLA School of Film or USC's film school. These are slick, well-produced productions, and they're frightening, and they're meant to be frightening. That's how Islam has spread throughout the centuries, through fear and intimidation. And here's Nancy Pelosi. Forgive me, she's my congresswoman out here in San Francisco. She's talking about, well, ISIS has made more advances than we expected on social media. MSNBC, this is clip five, please. It's an enormous challenge, and and we have to fight it on every front, including the front of social media. Uh, That is a place where they have really made more advances than you would have suspected. And that is where we have to fight them as well. You want uh, you want to use social media, Nancy, to uh, try get to ISIS? Contact the Billy Graham Evangelical Association. Have them put together a website to get these guys converted. They got to go from Allah to Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to save this world. You either introduce these Muslims to Jesus or introduce them to bacon, because once they taste bacon, they will realize it's really, really good, and the religion may be not worth it, or maybe beer, Jesus, bacon, or beer. McCain, there is no strategy to fight ISIS. I want to know what the strategy is because I am frightened by these creatures. Uh, creatures is, is to, didn't say, oh God, listen to Savage yesterday. Didn't he say something about ISIS being Satan? Somebody was Satan yesterday. <laughs> somebody was Satan yesterday on the Savage. Oh, Obama was Satan. <laughs> I knew somebody was Satan. Well, I talked to a very, I talked to a, uh, a very well-known theologian who's with the Acton Institute. Just look them up online. These are highbrow, uh, you know, men of God with PhDs, and they're very serious about their faith. And I was talking to a guy with the Acton Institute, and I said, you know, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of Christians think that Obama's the Antichrist. And he said, no, he's not the Antichrist. He is the perfect dress rehearsal for the Antichrist. It's just amazing how people swoon. Oh, my God, everything he says, doesn't matter what he says. They start clapping before he even gets two words into the sentence. Drones, brainwashed. Now, what are the Republicans doing about it? Well, if we can just get Jeb in there. Here is Richard calling from KVOC in Wyoming. Richard, welcome to the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Can I just tell you, I love Wyoming. I really do. I love Wyoming. Where Where do you live in Wyoming? Casper. I I love Casper. I've been there. Yeah. It's oh. God's country. I mean, I've been to Cody, Wyoming. You know, you think of you know wild. So you got a C- Cody. So here's here's Wild Bill Cody, right? This guy could pick anywhere he wanted to live in the entire western United States. He chooses Cody, Wyoming, for a good reason. It is absolutely beautiful there. That is God's country. Yes, anyway, go ahead. Hey, I, I, I want to know what the rules of engagement were uh, when we were supposed to be bombing these guys out of existence or uh, pushing them back so far that they, that they become cowards. You're talking about ISIS, correct? ISIS? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I, I I don't know what we're doing. I mean, I've heard, Richard, you've probably talked to guys who have served, they come back and they tell you about the rules of engagement. They're a joke. The rules of engagement are a joke. They're designed, it would seem, to a rational mind, to put our guys at risk. Yes. And now we're supposed to be doing these airstrikes against ISIS. What airstrikes? Them on motorcycles, two guys and harass the hell out of them. They couldn't shoot them, even if the guys had a rifle on, on them. And then some, uh, somewhere down the line, they would, they would send other guys out there to do that. Then they'd slap a bomb on the dang rig, you know? Listen, we, at some point, Richard, we have to get serious about these guys. We need a General Patton-type leader if we ever want to see these people defeated, because otherwise they will grow like metastatic cancer. They'll keep growing and growing and growing. And let's not forget, they've threatened the United States of America. They said the flag of ISIS is going to be flying from the White House. These people are serious. And they're a little different than us here in America. In America, we think on a what? A quarterly basis, based on the stock market. Everything's quarterly. Everything's quarterly success. They're thinking a quarter of a century. They're thinking 250 years out. They're not bothered by time. Yeah. Well, I, I talked to GIs from Fort Lewis. I was working in Washington State 
over there just down the road in Lakewood from Fort Lewis. Mm-hmm. I spent some time there myself because I was in the Army, too. Yeah. Uh, those guys, they didn't like, they don't like Obama at all. I have, a, I have a sign, I've had a sign on the back of my pickup ever since I moved back to Wyoming. It says, mm-hmm. impeach Obama. <laughs> And I get all kinds of, I used to get all kinds of thumbs up. I have guys talk to me. Hey, Richard, can I tell you something? You wouldn't believe this, but even here in San Francisco, I see the same bumper stickers, all right? I saw the the same bumper sticker on a Prius recently, okay? You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, you have a great day up in the beautiful state of Wyoming. If you've never been to Wyoming, you've got to go. It's just, it is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous place. Uh, speaking of, you know, that, that is a place. I remember I was driving through Wyoming, uh, made a big trip of the Western United States in an RV and my fit with my family. It was delightful, but we would go by these Indian res- reservations and it was amazing how many, I, you'd go by the Indian home, the, there'd be the Indian reservation or there'd be the high school home of the Redskins. <laughs> what? What? Home of the Redskins, you know, home of the, uh, so I just think to myself, there's all this craziness going on about these sports teams and their logos. But now you got the Madison School Board okaying a ban on student attire with Indian mascots and logos. So it doesn't matter if it's an NBA team, an MLB team, or a college, you know, like the Florida Seminoles. You wear that to school, you have violated school policy. That's the latest. You violated school policy based on this. And I, this is in Madison, Wisconsin. Now, I love you folks listening in Madison, in, in Wisconsin. I, I love your governor. He said this, Governor Scott Walker, if the state bans speech that is offensive to some, where does it stop? And he's exactly right. That defies the spirit of the First Amendment. He wrote this in a letter to a lo- local tribal leaders. He said, a person or person's right to speak does not end just because what they say or how they say it is offensive. Amen, amen, and amen, Governor Walker. Savage Nation. Brian Sussman, proud to be filling in for Michael Savage. Don't forget michaelsavage.com for all the latest news, and we'll dive into the website in just a couple minutes here on the program. Also, the book, A Must Read. It's the final in the trilogy. And uh, we have to talk about this. It is, of course, the countdown to Mecca. And your call's coming up on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman again filling in. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage today on this, The Savage Nation. MichaelSavage.com is the website. I'm there right now. And a lot of the stories we've been talking about this afternoon, this evening, are indeed from the website. Uh, We haven't heard the audio from Marie Barf. Last name actually rhymes with Harf. Or is it the other way around? Marie Harf, last name rhymes with Barf. Either way, uh, boy, she is so skillful in terms of her devious rhetoric, isn't she? She's getting she's getting a big promotion now. She will no longer be the State Department spokesperson. She's going to be John Kerry's personal strategic communications spokesperson. So that means she's the strategic liar and spinner. And as long as we're talking about Secretary of State Kerry, we can talk about ISIS, which a lot of people want to talk about. This administration doesn't want to do anything about ISIS, and it bothers people greatly. Kenny is calling from WABC in New York. Kenny, talk to me. So you're telling me maybe we don't have to worry so much about ISIS. Go ahead, please. Well, first of all, uh, talking to the Savage Nation is unbelievable. Talking to you is great. We know we want Mike to get better. The first thing is, let's stop calling Jonathan Bush Jeb. His name is Jonathan Bush. Jeb is just a strategic name to core in all the Southern conservative good old boys to vote for him. To think he's- is that true? The Jeb, Jeb is just a simple nickname, huh? That's all it is? Yeah, it's a these people are, are well to do. You think they call each other Jeb and W? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you're, you're probably right there. Go ahead. <laughs> Nelson Rockefeller must be laughing up wherever he is. Right. <laughs> okay, go 
Okay, but Kenny, to your point, ISIS is not as powerful as everyone thinks they are. Explain that. Well, because it's, it's like chasing around a bunch of cockroaches. We just we let little nothings intimidate Americans. We're afraid. Americans are afraid of the real Americans are afraid of nothing. And I don't. Uh, you know, a real. Here's what. Would you agree with me, Kenny? A real American is afraid of their government. We we should we should not trust our government ever. We should. The, our system of government here in the United States, the federal system of government, was and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, were designed to protect us from government. Yes, but now we have people inside this country who depend on government. It's getting bigger and bigger. You got to remember, as the population gets bigger and bigger, you're going to have more people depending on the government, and the government is going to get bigger and bigger. Remember the fallacy: the Republicans used to say we believe in smaller government. We do that. Right. Yeah, we've never seen that, have we? We, we will never see that. The only way we can get to grips with this stuff is to deal with what's going on. We have unchecked immigration. We have millions of people coming inside this country. People coming in. We have race quotas. Uh, well, but, Kenny, it's no longer illegal immigration. Remember what you heard on the Savage Nation yesterday? It's called international commuters. That's what these people are. They're international commuters. They're no longer illegal immigrants. They're international commuters. They are invaders. We don't let them steal the dialogue. Don't let them steal the vernacular, the American vernacular. Good These point. people who support this are open border freaks. That's what they should be branded as. We can't absorb the whole world. If the whole world could come here, they would come here, and they're going to just they look at it as like a big, giant piece of rock candy, and all they can take, they couldn't care less. Look at the American GI veterans. This really made me sick. These guys couldn't get any coverage, any help, and those animals down in Guantanamo Bay could call doctors, American doctors, and get oh, yeah. treatment. Come on. That's not America. That's not my America. Oh, listen, Kenny, thanks for your call. Good call. Uh, when we return, we were, as long as we're talking about the guys from Gitmo that were released who are just about their travel bans about to come to an end, I got a Gitmo story you've got to hear from a guy who used to work there. And these Taliban Five. We'll do that coming up on the Savage Nation. Michaelsavage.com. Don't forget Michael's new novel, Countdown to Mecca. A renegade group of generals and their plot to destroy Mecca. So we're going to be talking about that as well. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, the Savage Nation. And don't forget the phone number because I do want to hear from you. Lots of time to call in. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-SAVAGE. MichaelSavage.com. Brian Sussman on this, the Savage Nation. It's the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for the good doctor who's off today. Of course, yesterday uh, we listened to the program, and he was doing a yeoman's job of struggling through the illness that was befalling him, but everyone thought it would be best just to lay low today, so hopefully everything's going to work out, and he's back tomorrow. So Brian Sussman filling in. Don't forget michaelsavage.com. It's loaded with all the top stories that we've been following for you this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are as we go through the program here. As we concluded the last half hour, we got into a brief discussion regarding the Taliban Five, those five Taliban generals that were released by Barack Obama and were swapped for Bo, Bo, Bogue Bergdahl, the traitor. Bogue Bergdahl, the deserter. Uh, Bo Bergdahl, the kind of soldier that the left loves. Oh, this is a man who followed his heart. He realized just how low the, 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 uh, the United States military had become and he left his post. That's the that's the kind of that's the kind of soldier the lefties like. I'm surrounded by them here in San Francisco. These are people who, like Obama, want to fundamentally transform this country. These are people you meet. These people in this city, the Libbies who are in their uh, 60s, 70s. These are the same ones that spit on the guys when they came home from Vietnam. Okay, they haven't changed their stripes. So there's a, a fellow I know who is a caller to the the station that Michael and I are on in San Francisco, KSFO. And I was so intrigued by this guy's calls that I actually asked if I could meet him. That doesn't happen very often. But I asked if we could get together. He was in charge of intelligence at Guantanamo Bay. Now, there's a lot he could tell me, and there's a lot he couldn't tell me. And he's, he's a great American guy, and, you know, he gave me what he could. Everything he gave me was declassified. But he was in charge of intelligence at Gitmo. He knew all of these guys, not by name, by number. He knew them all. He's had these creeps spit in his face and fling crap at him and pee on him and the rest. He knows these people inside and out. 
He was in charge of intelligence. He's coming back from Africa, knows nothing about the news going on in this country, and he's in an airport. I can't remember what airport it was, but I can tell you this, CNN was on. I don't know what kind of deal CNN has worked out with these airports, but it's at every airport. He's watching CNN, and he sees these five guys, these five Taliban generals. And he, he says, oh, gosh, there's 106502, there's 359847, there's 4672F, there's five. He's going through their names, and then he realizes he's, their numbers, because he doesn't know their names, and then suddenly they superimpose their names on the screen. He goes, my God, what? what? What is happening here? Why are these guys in the news? And then he hears about the prisoner swap. He asks that the... The volume be raised. He's at the airport, just flies in from Africa. He asked that the volume be raised, and he's riveted to the screen as he hears we have traded these five guys for Bo Bergdahl, who he knew nothing about, other than he'd been taken, he'd been captured by the Taliban. So my friend, we call him Gitmo Jim. Gitmo Jim is outraged because he's thinking, does Obama not know who these guys are? They're ruthless killers. They are beholden to the jihadist cause. They will never change their stripes. And we're putting them back out there to go back on the battlefield someday? He, my friend was absolutely livid. Because unlike Obama, he knows these guys personally. But then again, maybe it doesn't matter, does it? Maybe Obama doesn't care. Maybe he doesn't care. But do you realize we made these swaps, the swap for these guys with Bo Bergdahl, the deserter. Oh, but there was going to be a one-year travel ban. They would, they'd be stuck in Yemen, observed by the Yemen government. They wouldn't be able to travel for a year. Oh, really? So the year's coming up now. And what's Obama doing about it? Nothing. He probably thinks it's only fair. They've served their time. They were held unjustly in Gitmo. They've been released. They can go about their business. I read one story that this administration is actually saying, well, you know, they're middle-aged guys now. It's not like they're really going to go back on the battlefield. What difference does that make, to quote Hillary Clinton? Are you kidding me? Good Lord. So we've got that story. There's another story. This is, this is a fascinating one. I know how much Michael loves nature. He, man, half of his life was spent studying nature. I love nature. I love... Uh, I love going out and hiking in it. I love hunting in it. I love sitting back and just surrounding myself in it. I love nature. But this is a study published in the journal called Environmental Psychology. Anyway, there's a growing body of scientific literature, peer-reviewed literature, regarding the health advantages, psychological and otherwise, of being exposed to nature. I totally believe this. It's a fascinating story in the wall, uh, Washington Post. Now, wh what happens when we're exposed to nature? You know what it is? You're, you're seeing God. You get out of nature, you are seeing the face of God. Uh, how many of us have been at a low point in our life? Whatever that low point may be, you know what it is, I know what it is, whatever it is. You just, you go take a walk in the park, in the forest, go to the beach. Suddenly, look up at the sky at night. A starry sky when there's no light pollution. That's right, I said light, L-I-G-H-T, light pollution. You take a big breath and you realize, okay, well, maybe, maybe my problems aren't so bad as I once thought. But, I mean, this reminds me of something that was said by a well-schooled Jewish rabbi named Saul of Tarsus. You Gentiles know him as St. Paul. Who said, quote, for since the creation of the world, his, God's, invisible attributes are clearly seen. His invisible attributes are seen in nature. In nature. And he says, therefore, everybody's without excuse. Because he's available to us in nature. You look outside, you can see him. There is no excuse. You know, I, I think liberalism could pro probably be cured in a lot of people. Just go outside and take up fishing or hunting or something like that. I know Peter says you're not supposed to. Just, for God's sake, just at least take up golf. Go outside. Relax a little bit. Drink it in, man. Meet God face to face. Sober up. 
Maybe that'll put you out of your liberal stupor. I think Savage has been saying for years it's a mental illness. Maybe that will cure your mental illness. And then there's China. China, the guys who produce the Savage Nation, uh, hooked me up with a story here on China. And, and I will tell you something. I've been concerned about this for some time. China's military, they're expanding. They're expanding. Why are they expanding? What's in it for China to expand? So China says yesterday it plans to extend its global military reach to safeguard its economic interests while defending its territorial claims at sea. Aha, the China Sea. So they're, they're beefing up their Navy. They're be- beefing up their Air Force. At a time when we're cutting back, they're growing. So what's this all about? And by the way, they're going to be shifting their focus from territorial air defense to both defense and offense. What is this about? You know what it's about, I believe, just on papers that I've read, produced by China, produced by our military. If China can impose its will in the South China Sea, you've got five rivals, all smaller, weaker Asian states. They're going to be limited to a narrow band of sea along their coastlines. And then what does China get? China gets security for its supply lines of oil. You know, wars have been fought over natural resources over the years many, many times. China gets security for its crucial supply of oil and other commodities. Exclusive access to unbelievable fishing in the area. uh, As well as um, a large buffer against U.S. naval intrusions. And, of course... um, what else is going on here? Perhaps perhaps it's demand that Taiwan come back under its control. And when they decide to pull that lever, what's the United States going to do? Nothing. 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 I'm not sure what we should do at that point in time. But you see, China has a strategy. And by the way, part of their global outreach strategy for supremacy does not involve radical Islam. They don't allow that. They deal with that pretty well. I, how do we deal with it here? Oh, come on in. Uh, assimilate, assimilate. We don't really care. Come on in. This is amazing. It's just amazing what's happening here. And now you've got schools across the country. I'm reading today. Schools across the country are actually having little rap sessions for the kids. The kids break out of the traditional class setting. And okay, all the kids that look like this go into this pod. And the kids that look like that go into this pod. So we get the brown kids here, the black kids here, the mixed kids here. Oh, whitey can go over there. What has happened in this country? Why are we doing this? It's all happening under the first black president of the United States. You'd think this would be cause for everybody to get along. Instead, they're dividing us. They're dividing us. Rick's calling from the left coast. Rick, thank you for joining us on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go right ahead. (coughs) Brian, pleasure to chat with you. I hear you. Katie, very often in the morning. Um, oh, good. KSFO, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, this is just a early hypothesis. I don't want to uh, ascribe Machiavellian to it or anything right now that kind of slows down connecting the dots. But <clears throat> here's what I kind of think. Here's the hypothesis. I think Obama, he was a community organizer, and he knows how to move the chess pieces around is really kind of in a passive confession to allow the caliphate of ISIL to grow. On the other hand, he also wants Iran to grow. Now, why would he want both? And why wouldn't he be taking sides? I think he doesn't want to take sides because he's a master uh, puppeteer. He wants to be able to be in a situation where there are opposing forces, as you see evidence domestically all the time, Mm -hmm. And with the tension arising, there becomes economic opportunities, and also when there's more strife and more um, friction, there becomes more reason for control and other kinds of uh, uh, abilities to be imparted here. So he wants to, he doesn't necessarily have a dog in the race. He wants both there so he could be the master puppeteer of both. Uh, Rick, Uh, you may have something there. I appreciate your call here on the Savage Nation. Thanks for checking in. You know, if you look at um, Marx's laws of matter, 
Karl Marx and his Laws of Matter. It's, it's a really great exercise in academia, in, in leftist academ- academia, because in his Laws of Matter, uh, Karl Marx, like today's leftists, believes something that's, well, the, the leftist mindset based on Karl Marx's Law of Matter believes that some people are born with a lesser brain than others. And those with the better brain have some sort of right or responsibility or metaphysical uh, metaphysical right. I don't know how to describe it. But they have the sense of responsibility to master, as in puppet master, control or rule over those with the lesser brain. Because these elites believe, and Marx was an elitist, they believe they have the better brain, and we with the lesser brain, left to our own devices, will kill each other and destroy the planet. That's why they need heavy-handed regulations, heavy-handed laws, control people. And, and so with this rising tension does come that ability to better control us. Oh, you need to lose some liberty here. They would never tell you that. They will tell you that we need more laws. We need more things like an expanded Patriot Act or whatever it may be. But this is what they believe. So I think the caller was onto something there. Michael Savage is certainly onto something with his most recent book, Countdown to Mecca. It's available at stores now. So basically what you have in this book, it's the third in this trilogy. It's a renegade group of generals within the United States government who have this secret plot to destroy Mecca. And what's interesting is, it's, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's the perfect timing. Here we are talking about ISIS, right? Uh, there could be, a, and I'm quoting from Savage here. Savage says, there could be a renegade group of generals who plan some catastrophic event to stop this madness that has been going on for millennia against the West. And as we all know, that could lead to Armageddon, which none of us would benefit from. So that gives you a little inkling into this book, which I highly recommend. Go to a bookstore, demand it, Countdown to Mecca, michaelsavage.com as well. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Michael will be back in the saddle tomorrow, resting his voice. (laughs) This, uh, we were talking earlier, Savage mentioned this yesterday on the program. It was hilarious. I thought it was a joke at first, and then I realized, no, this is for real. The ACLU is calling illegal immigrants on our southern border international commuters let's go to ray ksfo san francisco ray international compute uh, commuters international commuters that's what they're calling them now not illegal yeah. aliens international commuters we we must be feel good about the language we use uh, building on what a caller said earlier the nomenclature the verbiage is what matters the most and uh, these uh, international commuters well they need guidance to get in the country and we used to call those guys coyotes I guess we can call them uh, unauthorized travel coordinators. And, uh, you know, once, once these commuters get here, they're going to need a job. But they can't work because it's illegal, so many of them take the crime. They might end up, uh, you know, robbing banks or selling drugs. And, but we can't call them bank robbers and drug dealers. We need to call them uh, persons who make unauthorized withdrawals or, uh, or maybe an unlicensed pharmacist working on the corner. So... Let's feel good. Let's feel real good about what we're doing here uh, and change the verbiage and pat ourselves on the back. I'm hanging up on myself, Brian. That's very good. Very good. Yes, I like that. Unauthorized or unlicensed pharmaceutical dealers. I like that. Or as I oftentimes refer to the guy who's in the White House right now, you know, the president of the United States. I call him the man occupying the White House. Somehow when I say that, I just feel a little bit better. And I'm hoping there will be a change, as I know many of you are as well. Savage Nation! Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. MichaelSavage.com. Back in just a moment. Carly slamming Hillary. What did she say to slam Hillary? You'll hear next.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's The Savage Nation, all right. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. It's always difficult to follow that announcer's voice. His voice is just so deep and so rich. And then you got mine, and mine's nothing like Savage's. Who, you know, it's, there's no other voice like his on the radio. And I've been uh, witness to that since I started listening to him locally here in San Francisco in the 90s, before I was ever even in radio. I host a program on KSFO in San Francisco now where he's always been. He made that station. But I was in television back then, used to thoroughly enjoy his local shows, and then he went national and bingo. MichaelSavage.com. Go there. You'll see all the top stories of the day, including this one. Ah, yes. Well, the headline at Savage is The Fall of Ms. Barf. That's Marie Harf. Ah, she's leaving the State Department. Now she's going to be the Director of Strategic Communications for John Kerry. Can you believe this? So she'll be the chief liar, spinner, etc. for Kerry. This woman has sold more Whoppers than the Burger King. It's just amazing. She says stuff. It's like a comedy show. I mean, if Saturday Night Live wanted to do a great bit, just do some shtick based on her. But nonetheless, this is one of her greatest ones. It was very recent, and the guys have a compilation, but we may only get through one. Uh, A compilation of four of these. But she's talking here about what we need to do to prevent the rise of all these ISIS recruits. They need jobs. That's what they need. They need jobs. I mean, Obama came out last week saying it's because of climate change that these guys are joining ISIS. It's because of climate change. You know, crops are failing. The economy is bad because of climate change. Hey, note to self, Obama. That's a desert. They've always had crop problems. Fly over the Middle East into Israel someday. Desert, desert, desert. You looked at, you're in the plane, 20,000 feet as you're descending, 15,000 feet, 10,000 feet. You notice desert, 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 brown, 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 boom, green. It's Israel. Look what you can do with the desert with a little ingenuity. But I digress. I think the problems in the Middle East really do come down to weather. I will agree with Obama about that. I don't think it's man caused, of course, but it does come down to weather. Okay, let's be realistic. You wake up, it's 8 in the morning, it's already 110 degrees outside, and you're wearing burlap underwear. That would get you pretty ticked off in a hurry. Okay, so we have Marie Harf. Here she is. Oh, it's all about jobs. If we just, if these men, we just need a jobs program for these guys, then they won't join ISIS. Take a listen to this. We need in the longer term, medium and longer term, to go after the root causes that leads people to join these groups, whether it's lack of opportunity for jobs. What makes these 17-year-old kids pick up an AK-47 instead of try to start a business? And I didn't hear a lot of alternatives. I heard a lot of sort of... Hold on. Yeah, stop right there. You know know what causes these kids to do it? They're trained in the mosques. It starts at home. It goes to the mosques. They hear this hate talk. They hear the hate talk. uh, They're forced to read those... Rest, uh, these verses from the Quran that talk about chopping off the infidel's head. That's where it comes from. Then they're told to get 72 virgins. Come on now. Oh, can't go there. Politically incorrect. Shove it. In the words of John Kerry's wife, just shove it. Remember when she used to say that back when he was running for president? What if he decided to run for president? Oh, gosh. That would be easy to take him off the, off the map quickly. Just bring out all those swift boat veterans again. Those guys couldn't stand him. John Kerry, Secretary of State. How does this happen? Now you got Carly Fiorina. She certainly knows something about business. She certainly knows how to run companies. There was a time in the 90s where for several years she was businesswoman of the year. Um, And she's one of these high net worth individuals who isn't shy about that, like Hillary, claiming she's Poe. Hillary's Poe. She's so poor, she can't afford the O-R at the end of the word. She's po. When we got out of the White House, we didn't have money for mortgages. Can you believe this garbage? 
Bill Clinton, while she was Secretary of State, pulls down $50 million on speeches? What the? So Carly Fiorina, she's on MSNBC today because they don't have an audience, and Michael Savage does, will allow people to hear what she had to say. Carly, we're doing you a favor, okay? So here she is. Let's do clip 12, Carly Fiorina on Hillary, and if Hillary can be trusted. Clip 12, please. I think when 82% of the American people now believe that there is a professional political class more interested in preserving its own power and privilege than it is in serving the American people, people expect basic questions to be asked of anyone running for president. What have you done? Are you trustworthy? Are you transparent? Will you answer questions? Bingo. I love it. Hillary Clinton, what have you done? Let's look at the Middle East. That happened under your watch. Let's talk about Benghazi. Let's talk about these email servers. Oh, she's going to be giving over the emails. Right, right, right. There's even a recent story on that this morning. A federal judge issued an order today requiring the State Department to make public batches of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's emails available every 30 days starting next month. The uh, State Department wanted to do it every 60 days. There was a guy who was suing, wanted it every two weeks, so they split the baby. It's every 30 days. But here's the deal. She's handed over 55,000 emails. She's deleted 55,000 emails. And her lawyers were the ones who decided which ones should be deleted. Doesn't that, you, you liberals curiously listen to this program, doesn't that bother you? Come on now. Try to engage your brain for just one moment. I know it's in there somewhere. Hello? Hello, brain? It's in there somewhere. Wake up! Okay, let's see here. Here's uh, Fiorina on Hillary's record. Speaking of, Hillary, what have you done? (laughs) Here's Fiorina talking about that. Take a listen. That is Secretary of State, she took women's rights and human rights off the table for discussion with China. It's also true as Secretary of State that she called Bashar al-Assad a positive reformer. It's also true that in 2011, when she was Secretary of State, she said that Iraq was a free, stable, sovereign nation, and now we have a nation falling apart, Iranian influence growing, ISIS growing. It's true that she said that she could reset our Russia, our relationship with Russia, and. Vladimir Putin is on the march. So I think all of those things I just named go fundamentally to what is her track record. I believe the Clintons, maybe I'm the only one, I think these politicians are pretty slimy. I believe the the, the Clintons have done opposition research on everybody. Just like I believe Obama probably has something on Boehner and McDonnell, McConnell. These guys turn so easily. I don't know what they have on them. Maybe it's an affair. Maybe it's something. They got something on these guys. Would it surprise you? I wonder if they got anything on Fiorina. I hope she's as pure as the wind-driven snow. Whoever, whoever the person is that becomes president or the candidate for the Republicans, I hope they're pure as the wind-driven snow so they can just go for the political jugular. Uh, Rubio said something here. Uh, Am I a Rubio fan? I don't know. I do think he looked like a doofus when he gave that uh, rebuttal thing where he had a parched mouth and had to reach over for water, and it just looked stupid. It was really bad. I'm sorry. There's no making excuses for that. He looked like a dork. Uh, but anyway, Rubio, and, and he is a politician, clearly. You look at how quickly he rose through the ranks in Florida. Uh, maybe he's a good guy. I don't know. I don't know. But I do like what he said about this. He warned of a clear and present danger to Christianity because of gay marriage. And he is, he is spot on. He's spot on. And this is going to be the thing that uh, the left uses to silence the Christians. Gay marriage, where do you stand on the issue? Where's your church on the issue? Do you go to one of those hater churches, man? Do you realize even in employment, it's going to come down to that. Do you go to a hater church? Oh, we can't have you here, man. Can't have you here. Oh, they may not say that to your face, but they'll be saying it behind your back when you don't get the job. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? First, it'll be 501c3 status. And uh, after that, mm-hmm. oh, you're not going to be able to marry this particular couple. I see. Oh, this particular couple can't be a part of the membership of your church. Oh, well. No, Rubio's right. Clear and present danger to Christianity. 
then you've got the story that uh, the producers of the Savage Nation gave for me, Brian Sussman filling in. And this has to do with the Vatican calling Ireland's vote for same-sex marriage a defeat for humanity. So this was a referendum. 62% of the voters came out, pun intended, came out in favor of marriage equality for gays and lesbians. Hmm. Gays and lesbians. Um, so this Vatican uh, guy says, I was deeply saddened by the result. This is Cardinal, Cardinal Pietro Paron. I was deeply saddened by the result. You cannot just talk of a defeat for Christian principles, but for a defeat for humanity. Okay, well, I'm curious. You know, the Irish, do they get offended by the Notre Dame fighting Irish little guy, their mascot? Because everybody's up in arms about this redskin stuff. Do they get upset about the fighting Irish? I don't think, I don't see anybody protesting. You look at that little guy, it's a character of an Irishman. He's a little midget. He's got his fists up. He looks drunk. Kind of looks like a leprechaun. Do they get upset about that? I'm just curious. No, of course they don't get upset. But what is everybody so touchy-feely these days? Let's go to the lines here, if we may. I, you know, this has been an intriguing one. We need to keep Bill in Idaho on hold for just a moment, because he, he's talking about being a conservative anarchist. I think we'll need a little more time to tap into his brain on that one. Can we quickly go to Keith at WABC? Keith, we were talking about this outlandish trade, five Taliban generals for a deserter named Bo Bergdahl. Uh, the Taliban guys, their one-year travel ban is about to come to an end, and, and this administration is making us believe that, oh, don't worry, these are reformed characters. They're just going to be playing pinochle over there in Yemen. You don't have to worry about them. Go ahead, Keith. Talk to us from WABC. Yeah, you know, I wanted to get into the comments that our pusillanimous dictator fool made, the president, I mean, when he let them go, this exchange take place, you know, you got the Muslim wannabe deserter. And, uh, you know, I, I always laugh at the comment as far as, he, he can't speak English right now, so we can't come up with such a nonsense. <laughs> that, was, anyway, that was so bizarre. So then the dictator says, this is what happens when wars end. Hey, fool, what war ended? Just tell me what war ended there, because I yeah. see terrorism all over the place. I forgot about that. This is, this is how wars end. Good, good, good comment. The war is hardly over. And his comments over Memorial Day, making it sound as if, you know, oh, we've, we've packed up and gone home. We still have 10,000 guys in Iraq and Afghanistan right now. And we're still flying missions, supposedly, to kill ISIS. All right. Savage Nation. MichaelSavage.com. The book, of course, that's out right now, Countdown to Mecca. It's in stores. And Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Well, this took place today. Obama has claimed dominion over all of America's streams, creeks, ditches, brooks, tributaries, wetlands, even puddles. This is a sweeping move to assert unilateral federal authority once again via the Environmental Protection Agency, along with the Army Corps of Engineer, uh, Engineers. They now have authority to control all waterways within the United States and... They will exercise that authority. We're finalizing a clean water rule to protect the streams and the wetlands that one in three Americas rely on for drinking water, says Gina McCarthy. And we're doing that without creating any new permitting requirements and maintaining all previous exemptions and exclusions. Folks, this is absolute eco-freak. This is, this is eco this is eco-tyranny. This is eco-tyranny. They're taking over. That means water on private properties. Oh, that means groundwater. Oh, sure, sure, groundwater. This is a takeover. This is a totalitarian move with green underpinnings. Now, along those green lines, it's rather interesting. A couple of the stories in the news, you've got... The, Volvo is showing everybody its self-driving car in the Dominican Republic. Have you guys seen this video? It's hilarious. 
Fortunately, nobody gets hurt. But all these journalists are at the unveiling of this Volvo. Hey, look at it. Self-driving. Now, watch it move forward and park. All right, everybody's got their cameras rolling. Got the cell phones out. Everybody's taking pictures. Nobody was behind the wheel. This thing speeds up and plows into the journalists, <laughs> knocking them around like bowling pins. How nobody got hurt, I have no idea. Self-driving cars. Okay, that's why I don't trust them. And then you've got Apple. Apple, of course, you know, big time green. They have a great, they have great products. Don't get me wrong. I'm even a shareholder. Okay, I'm just going to say that right off the bat. Even though Al Gore is on the board, but uh, they're all about being green, of course, at Apple. Uh, being green is in money more than anything else. They're green about money. They have more money than the federal treasury. But I digress. Bottom line is Apple's got this plant out in Mesa, Arizona, and it's a green build building, lead certified. It's got the solar panels on the roof. Hey, guess what cost fire? The solar panels. <laughs> See, I just love it when the green technology goes awry. It is hilarious. Come on now. Savage Nation, go to michaelsavage.com for all the latest news. And uh, you should also make sure that you get a copy of Countdown to Mecca. This is a book that uh, the New York Times, of course, has omitted from their bestseller list. This is a book that the bookstores, you know, you'll get these kooky libs go into the bookstores and they take Michael's book and they bury it in the back by feminine hygiene or something like that. But this is truly a bestseller, even though the New York Times won't admit it. And it really does show what could happen given the militancy of radical Islam today and the passivity of the man occupying the White House today. Uh, so again, I'm not going to give away the story, but I highly encourage you order Countdown to Mecca. All right, Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage. We have one half hour of this program left to go, and we are here to serve. 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-SAVAGE. It is the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage here on the Savage Nation. And we are anticipating Savage to be back behind this microphone tomorrow. He made it through yesterday's program, and he's got that crud that's been going around, as many of you know, because you've had it. So the thought was lay low for a day, bring in Sussman to fill in, and then he's back tomorrow. So we hope that works out. Uh, MichaelSavage.com for all of your new needs. And don't forget the book. The new thriller from best-selling author, prolific author Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. Bill has been holding quite a while from KBOI in Idaho. Bill, are you there? Hey, how are you, Brian? I'm doing well. Thanks for holding. Go right ahead. Hey, yeah, I'm just calling in because uh, there are some comments on... Uh, anarchism in the last in the Well, yeah, stuff. you know, in fact, we should probably reset. We were talking earlier about anarchy, and we had a conversation about what ha what's happening in this country, and we had a couple of callers uh, defending the president and a couple of callers defending these miscreants that are on the streets violating the laws, and we had cops calling in saying, listen, when somebody's violating the laws, we have to enforce the law. So anyway, Bill, we were talking about anarchy, just to reset the table for listening listeners who were just checking in. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, the, yeah, the comments uh, you guys made, I don't, I don't disagree. By the way, uh, there's, but the thing is, there's three schools of anarchism. Uh, there's anarcho-communism, which, uh, you know, that's what I, a lot of people would have pinned this president on. Um, and then you have anarcho-syndicalism, which is more like, oh, praise the union. But there's a third school that's not very well talked about because, well, the left sees it as kind of a threat to what they what they want, which is called anarcho-capitalism, and that's what, what I am. I consider myself an independent conservative. That's why I'm a huge fan of the Savage Nation. Um, but anarcho-capitalism is a little different because we promote true laissez-faire capitalism, and we're not anti-law. See, that's, that's the difference between an anarcho-communist and an anarcho-capitalist. An anarcho-communist wants to get rid of laws. An anarcho-capitalist is more critical of the government using coercion uh, against the people to uh, obtain its wealth, and we just think that the government. So, Bill, I mean, you're so the the anarchic the 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 conservative anarchist 
or the capitalist anarchist believes in unfettered capitalism. In other words, get rid of the shackles of regulation, allow for true free enterprise to take place, correct? Correct. I'm for that. I, I will tell you, but no, I, Bill, I am for that, and so are our listeners. We've gotten to a place now where every move is being watched by the government. In fact, one thing with the Patriot Act, uh, the, the way it's worked in, in the last bunch of years is any transaction at a bank over $10,000 is automatically regulated, is reported to the feds. Well, it's to stop money launderers. Well, it's to stop terrorists. I, I don't care. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a money launderer. Every time I do a transaction of 10000 or more, that's nobody's damn business but me and the bank. But it goes beyond that now. Because of the Patriot Act bill, there is a, a, a rule, a law, a regulation in place. If the teller is just a little bit suspicious of you, you're, you're taking out $1,000, they can report it to the feds. Now, that's wrong. Okay, but beyond that, now let's talk about Dodd-Frank because you got me going. If you own 10 rental properties, that means you're really good at rental property work. And some people do this for a living. There are a lot of people that have 10 rental properties. Do you realize because of Dodd-Frank, if you have 10 mortgages on 10 rental properties, good luck trying to get an 11th. You can't. You're not able to. Now, what kind of crap is that? That's not capitalism. That's communism. So I'm with you on this one, Bill. I like what you're saying, but continue, please. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's another thing is, like, well, how can you have law without property? Like, cause what is a law? I mean, the way I kind of see it is a law is, uh, it, it is a, or a, a property rule at the, uh, you know, after a conflict resolution. Like, okay, this, this property belongs to this person because they killed the land to make that plant, or they're the uh, entrepreneur or engineer or whatever that made it. Therefore, it belongs to them. And, you know, and then the, the real difference between an anarchistic conservative or an anarcho-capitalist and a normal conservative is we just think that most of the things the government does can be taken care of more efficiently by the private sector if there is competition, you know, to produce those things. A- absolutely. Uh, you know, it's interesting, Bill. Uh, for those of us who have owned businesses, and my wife and I have owned several small businesses, uh, for those who own real estate, my wife and I have investment properties. We just look at it's an uphill battle on every front. The government regulation, the restrictions, all of the hurdles you have to jump through in establishing a business. And it's it's worse in other parts of the country than others. I'm here in California where it's got to be the worst. And then the regulations for investment property. And all of the hoops that you have to jump through as if you're some kind of an idiot that doesn't know how to do it yourself. The government just makes it worse, and the government makes it more expensive. Everything they tax, it becomes more expensive, obviously. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, listen, I, I like this. I, so, again, it's the uh, – pronounce it for me one more time because I want to get this right. It's the – it's the, the anarcho – say it again, please. Uh, anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho-capitalism. I love it. Thanks. Bill out of Boise, thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. Well, and aside from being anarcho-capitalist, I love that. I love that. Uh, we, are to, we are also people of a rebellion different than the likes of which Michelle was talking about at that Oberlin College. You probably heard the clips that Savage was playing yesterday. Uh, in that of this, this is enshrined within our Declaration of Independence. Remember this? Sadly, they don't teach this in schools anymore, do they? Some of us were in our public schools at a time when everybody had to stand before the class and recite this. If that were the case today, oh my gosh, you'd have these hippie parents and these dippy parents and these, I don't, you'd probably get some of the, the refugee parents say, no way my child's not going to recite that. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitled them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. 
We hold these truths to be self-evident. Remember this? That all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, which among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, any form of government becomes obstructive to these ends. It is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute a new government. I remember it. That's not what Obama was talking about when he was referring to the fundamental transformation of America. He'd like to tear that Declaration of of Independence apart. He's a constitutional hacker. He says he's a constitutional law professor. You know what that means? Looking at uh, at at the Constitution and figure out ways to get around it. Figure out ways to poke holes in it. Take a knife to it. Slice it. Dice it. Hack it. Like you'd be hacking into a computer. Hack it like these idiots did to the uh, the IRS computers. And it takes the IRS four months to figure out what was going on. Can you believe this? Obama's a, a hacker, a constitutional hacker. And now we know because of this Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, he's also the illegal president. In that the court slapped him upside of the head for disobeying the law, disobeying Uh, the Congress, going it alone with his DAPA, his DAPA. Yeah, the IRS, this is quite a story. And you've got this Koskinen guy, the head of the IRS, saying, well, this isn't a security breach. What? It's not a security breach. You have fraudsters going into the computers of the IRS and uh, hacking into 100,000 taxpayers' accounts, filing false returns, and grabbing and running with $50 $50 million in the process. Oh, this isn't a security breach. And what? This is just the latest embarrassment for this tax agency, which is obviously out of control. This is amazing. And by the way, the computer program that these bad guys hacked into, this is a program that Obama was all excited about. Oh, yeah. He said, we need this. We need the Get Transcript Application. It'll streamline government. Guess what? Your streamlined uh, application, which probably cost us $100 million, I don't know, was hacked into. And what's even crazier, the federal government is so stupid, they don't know this is going on for four months. Can you imagine? I'm talking to you from the Silicon Valley. Uh, You know, right down the street, okay, we've got uh, Google, online company. Uh, But better yet, let's go to an e-commerce company. We've got Amazon. And we've got eBay. There's two. And you could look at, oh, we got LinkedIn. They do, you know, they, they, have, they facilitate uh, commerce. Whatever the case may be. But let's just say it's, it's an e-commerce company where there's actually transactions going to place. Okay, Amazon, eBay. How about this? Somebody hacks in to an eBay user's account and starts, you know, or, or PayPal. How about that PayPal? Somebody hacks into a PayPal account. They're right down the street as well. And they just start taking money from the bank account. Start making trades on eBay in somebody else's name. Buying, selling, making all sorts of money. Are you telling me that eBay, P- PayPal, or Amazon wouldn't know about that within an hour? Of course they would. The IRS doesn't know about this for four months? How stupid are they? This is a government that's out of control with layers and layers of bureaucracy. So literally, the right hand doesn't know what the left is doing. And this Koskinen guy, oh, this isn't a security breach. What planet are you on? What a liar. You know what? If their lips are moving, they're lying to us. Oh, this get transcript and application. It's going to streamline government. Yeah, again, probably cost $100 million to make because it was made by federal bureaucrats working on a contract. And uh, and we lost $50 million in taxpayer money as a result. Oh, so how's the government going to repair all this? Oh, okay, I got you. What they're going to end up doing is they're going to pay for a credit monitoring service for the 104,000 people whose IRS information was stolen. Oh, that's... Well, you know what? That'll help going forward, I'm sure. But this is how they, this is how they solve things. No, we'll, we'll give them a free a subscription to LifeLock. Bill is calling out of Jacksonville, Florida. Bill, tell me, what's the answer to the Islamic problem? We've got Islamic radicals 
trying to take over broad swaths of the world. What do you say we should do? Well, I don't know what we should do, but I know that they'll never do that in China because they would Chinese government there would never tolerate it. I'm sure that if they, they were, you don't hear of any bombings of, of of mosques or you don't hear any any trouble going on by Islamic people in, in in China. I don't know to what extent there is an Islamic population in China, but I'm sure there is. But they don't try to take over the country the way they're doing it everywhere else. And uh, their answer is you got to get tough and you got to be very tough. I know that uh, the Islamic people are a tough group. Because in Afghanistan uh, in the 1980s, Russia had to give up Afghanistan, which was a, a, a solid uh, satellite country of the Soviet Union at one time. Yeah. They had to give it up because those people are tough. Well, because, listen, how, how do you fight, Bill? How do you fight an enemy that's not afraid to die? Uh, how do you fight an enemy that's not afraid to die? Well, I'll tell you, in my opinion, and here again, I'm, uh, you know... Uh, I'm, uh, I mean, you, the only way you can do it is kill all of them. That's the only way you have, to, you have to give them their wish and kill all of them. Well, you don't kill all of them. You torture them to some extent, and you make them stop, and you get to the people that there is a certain amount of reasonableness among them who don't want to die. Uh, no, no, but I'm, I'm just talking about the fighters, the ones on the battlefield. They have to be eliminated, period. Yeah, well, find out what the Chinese are doing, because they... they well, they, you're right. They don't have a problem there, but... And again, the Chinese also like to imprison Christians. So I'm not looking at the Chinese as my role model, but you're right. On that particular score, they they don't have any problem. Brian Sussman filling in for the great Dr. Michael Savage. MichaelSavage.com. We'll come back, do a little wrap-up, because we certainly have talked a lot in these last three hours together. And also want to tell you about the book, Countdown to Mecca, which is in stores now. It is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in. Michael's back tomorrow, keeping our fingers crossed. Some of the headlines this, today. Well, we have the Vatican calling Ireland's vote for same-sex marriage a defeat for humanity. Ramadi falls to ISIS fighters, even though they were vastly outnumbered by Iraqi troops. Do you realize it was only hundreds of ISIS fighters, thousands of Iraqi troops? I guess when you see how ferocious these guys are, willing to lop off heads at a click of the fingers, you start to run. I don't know. Seems like that's what happened. Marco Rubio. It is a real and present danger that Christianity will be labeled hate speech, primarily because of gay marriage. Another headline on the Savage Nation. Just go to michaelsavage.com. You're 45% more likely to be murdered in de Blasio's Manhattan. Well, look what's going on there. He's going to ruin that city. Giuliani did a great job of cleaning it up. Now de Blasio, we know how he feels about the cops. Just wait. State Department spokeswoman Marie Harf, rhymes with barf, is leaving her post. Now she's going to work for John Kerry directly, his chief uh, correspondent for strategic communications. Great. Democrats call for a flood of Muslims to the United States. Fourteen Democrat senators have written a letter to President Obama urging him to dramatically increase the number of Syrian refugees. Great. Pastors are being encouraged to uh, to meet and talk about global warming. Yeah, yeah. Hey, pastors, all you have to do is go to the book of Genesis. It's in the Jewish Bible. Uh, go to chapter 8, where God says to Noah, While earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. Just read that. You don't have to worry about it. Countdown to Mecca is in the stores now. I highly encourage you to pick up a copy of this book. A, plow, a plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. No survivors but one Russian mercenary who hijacked the flight. And a cask containing hmm, WMD, I might say, is missing from the wreckage. That's where the, the story begins. You have to find out how it ends by ordering Countdown to Mecca by Michael Savage. Brian Sussman, proud to have been filling in on this, The Savage Nation.